Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Thank you very much for those who are watching online. Uh, we are uh, broadcasting from the International Islamic University Malaysia uh, in Gombak, UI, um, Gombak, Malaysia. And uh, I've been informed by the organizer that uh, for this program, for Umar Summit, uh, there are already 4,000, more than 4,000 uh, participants uh, registered from uh, throughout the globe. And uh, I've been informed that it is more than 10 countries. The participants coming from uh, more than 10 countries. And uh, we really hope that this program uh, will bring benefit uh, and will uh, give inspiration to uh, the Muslim uh, community around the globe uh, and how we can um, look for good role model, uh, not only uh, individual, but organization that available uh, in Malaysia. Okay, uh, today uh, for the first session, uh, we have uh, a very respected, uh, uh, rep uh, respectful guest uh, from uh, Muslim Pro. Uh, together with us is uh, Nick Amir Din, uh, who is currently the head of uh, Muslim Pro Malaysia office. Welcome, uh, Nick Amir. Assalamualaikum. Thank you for having me. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullah. And uh, before we uh, further uh, uh, communicate each other, I would like to know among us who have mobile phone. I think everybody is having mobile phone. Yeah. Uh, if in this uh, uh, studio we have more than twenty people, from these twenty people, if uh, if in the room and in online. How many of us downloaded the Muslim Pro apps? Uh, for me, I can see more than 20 hands, but we have only 20 people, but I can see more than 20 hands. Maybe they put up two hands. That means there are a lot of Muslim Pro users here. Yeah, so what is Muslim Pro? So we will know more further after this. And what is the challenges? What are the phases that they uh, have been gone through in order for them to become one of the best uh, Muslim lifestyle uh, application? I would say. Okay, let us introduce our speaker today. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, Nick Amir is the head of business development for the group, and uh, and he is uh, currently heads up. Uh, the Muslim Pro Malaysia operation and leads the group execution on uh, growth objective, business development effort, and marketing partnership and opportunities. And uh, prior to um, uh, to uh, prior to Muslim Pro, I think Amir spent six years in RHB Investment Bank, and I believe that you are good in uh, stock investment. I think maybe. And I, 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 and I can see that there might be possibilities that uh, Muslim Pro will be uh, listed in the, in the board one fine day to be uh, listed uh, and uh, to offer IPO to the public. And uh, he, uh, his last role was uh, the merger and acquisition where he led numerous uh, local and cross-boarding a and uh, m &A, uh, transaction across uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, before that, uh, Amir was part of the RHB corporate finance and debt uh, capital uh, market practices in Singapore. Uh, and uh, he started his career in investment at the Khazanah National Brahad. So without further ado, I would like to, um, to, to, to ask uh, our uh, guest today, uh, Amir, can you explain further what is Muslim Pro? It is the only um, uh, an ap application available on the line, or what is the actual uh, Muslim Pro for you? Okay, thank you, Khaled, and thank you for, for having me again. Um, I think you know many people who, who know Muslim Pro obviously know it as an app, and and every single time I, I meet someone, uh, or you know, uh, and and I always ask them, you know. Uh, do you know Muslim Pro? And, and they always say the same thing. Itu yang, the app yang bagi waktu solat lah. Or is it, 
is an app that I can uh, use to check my blood. So that's right. Uh, a lot of people probably know us uh, for, for that uh, very useful new feature. Uh, and in fact, uh, if I can share with you a little bit about Muslim Pro. So we have actually been around, uh, alhamdulillah, for 10 years. So this is actually our 10th year uh, going. And, and it may not seem for a long time for a lot of businesses, but I think uh, in the world of apps or the digital uh, business, 10 years is actually a very, very long time. Because as you know, many people, you know, when they create apps, uh, which is very popular after two or three years, uh, and then after that, uh, you know, people move on, they download new apps and they move on to, to, to kind of new applications. But uh, Alhamdulillah, Muslim Pro has been around for 10 years and we continue to grow every single year. And, and uh, I think we can definitely get into, you know, some of the reason why we have been uh, able to grow. But I think it comes down to this very simple reason that when you start, whether a business, a product or a service, you know, you must really be looking at something that the market needs and trying to, to, to deliver something that is, is badly needed. So if you remember, if I can just take um, the, the, the audience back 10 years ago, um, you know, uh, at that time, uh, you know, we all take for granted now, everyone is using a mobile phone. Everyone has, you know, 40 apps. They are using WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, a lot of this. But at that time, uh, not many people uh, were still using uh, uh, smartphones for one thing. And second thing, not many people had a lot of apps. So Muslim Pro at that time, when we first launched, we recognized that uh, for a lot of uh, users, um, and particularly, I think in, in Malaysia, we, you know, we are very fortunate. We have a lot of, uh, um, uh, we have a lot of uh, channels, whether it's TV, radio, or masjids nearby for people to have access to prayer times. But what we don't realize is that uh, not everyone is as fortunate as us, or not everyone is uh, equal in terms of their, uh, what they, they have. So one of the first uh, reasons why Muslim Pro app was created was because uh, we, uh, we recognize that for Muslims uh, around the world, and particularly uh, you know, in, in countries where it's not a Muslim majority, there was always this thing about you know, figuring out during uh, fasting month, Bukha Puasa, when, when is it uh, time to break fast? So yeah. this uh, was such a big need that uh, it, it convinced uh, our founders when we created the app to develop just a very, very simple app just to tell the next prayer time. And in fact, uh, the focus was so that people can uh, use the app to basically find out when is it time to break fast. So when we launched the app, initially the, the, the idea was to launch it uh, for, for, for the market in, uh, um, in, 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 in Indonesia and, and Malaysia, this region. Lah. But I think one of the blessings, you know, that's why they say business sometimes uh, success is, is not only a function of what you do, but also a bit of luck. So when we launched the app, uh, you know, we, we not only launched it in Bahasa Indonesia, Bahasa Indonesia, but we launched it in uh, English and, and a few other languages. So what we saw when we launched the app is that uh, we were expecting a lot of the downloads to come from this region, particularly Indonesia, where there is a lot of uh, Muslim population. But then uh, we started to see thousands and thousands of downloads not only from this location, but from places that we didn't expect. Places like London, places like New York, places like uh, all, you know, all across Europe. So from that day, we, we recognize that definitely that um, you know, uh, for the Muslim community, uh, this was some, a product or a service that they really badly needed. Uh, and, and that was how uh, the, you know, uh, Muslim Pro was born. Lah. And, and then obviously from there, uh, you know, we have come a long way. And if you were to, to compare our app at that time, which only told the next prayer time compared to all the things that we have, uh, it's, it's been quite an amazing journey. Lah. Yep. Yeah, uh, may I know how many downloader, uh, do download till now? Okay, so just to give you an example, I think from what I was told during the first month, because I, I wasn't there during the, the, the start of Muslim Pro, I think uh -huh. at most we only got, you know, a uh, few thousand few thousand downloads and at that time the team was very very happy you know to be able to get few thousand downloads they were already cheering you know five thousand ten thousand they thought that this is amazing you know there are more than five uh, thousand ten thousand people using uh, you know downloading and using the app and in fact when when, when i joined uh, three years ago uh, you know we were at uh, 40 million downloads so already i felt wow yeah. this is amazing you know uh, there are more than 40 million people all across the world, not only from places like Indonesia, Malaysia, but places like Japan, you know, uh, um, 
uh, all across uh, Europe, uh, US, you know, Australia, uh, Korea, all these places downloading, I was already very impressed. But again, you know, it, it goes to show that, um, you know, never underestimate the, 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 the opportunity in, in the Muslim community or the, the strength of the Muslim community. So Alhamdulillah, I'm happy to report that we have grown uh, very strongly. And, and as of now, uh, inshallah, by the end of this year, we should be able to reach our major milestone of 100 million downloads by the end of this year. 100 million? Yes, correct. Wow. So uh, what is uh, the biggest uh, or the largest uh, population that download uh, the apps? It's coming from South Asia or from Europe? So that's, I think, one of the strengths of Muslim Pro. Um, and I think it goes back to the, the not only the, the, the uh, I think the, the opportunity of, for, for Muslim Pro, but the opportunity for the Muslim market in general. Uh, when you look at all our top markets, uh, you're right. Uh, we, we do have uh, in this region, uh, Malaysia and Indonesia being the largest two uh, Muslim uh, countries in the region. They are obviously in our top markets. But then when you also look at our other top markets, they are very well spread out throughout the world. So we actually have, uh, of course, uh, um, in, in Europe, we have France and, and UK uh, uh, as a, one of our top markets, but also US and, and even in South Asia, where you are probably familiar in Pakistan and in India, there are very big Muslim population. So again, you know, it's very well spread out uh, throughout the world. And, and I think this goes back to the point that I make that, you know, for the Muslim community, uh, the challenges, uh, the opportunities is not only uh, for Malaysia or Malaysian businesses, you know, that we're discussing now, but it's a really a global, global challenge and a global opportunity. Then I can say that uh, uh, Muslim Pro is no more uh, a local uh, app application, but it is a, a global application now. And uh, uh, what is the best um, or the unique selling proposition that Muslim Pro have uh, and make the Muslim community around the globe download the apps. Apart from uh, you can choose a different kind of azan, uh, you can choose whether you would like to have the Madinah or uh, the Makkah uh, azan, apart from telling us time, what are other features that are available uh, for the Muslim community? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I think, you know, to, to answer that question, I will probably try not to, to uh, I, I want to make a point first. Lah. I think you're, you're right uh, that Muslim Pro, if you look at it now, um, there's a lot of features and, and I'll definitely talk about it, uh, things that make it, uh, you, you know, that have uh, distinguished our app from other apps. But I really want to highlight this uh, a point and a little bit of advice is that when we started Muslim Pro and for the longest time, uh, a lot of people thought that we grew and we immediately had all these different services. You know, we had community, we have content, we have uh, services. But, you know, uh, I think that's a mistake that, that some people make is when they rush into it, they try to do too many things. So actually, uh, as much as you say that, the reason why we were able to grow so fast and, and, and actually grow well is because we actually were very, very narrow and very focused on doing two things. Number one is the, uh, the, the quality of our information. You know, we had to make sure that, uh, you know, when we talk about something like the prayer time, so the Waktu Salat, is not only accurate in Malaysia, but for example, we tried to be, do the best job. Obviously, it's not perfect, but we tried to do the best job and make it accurate globally. So when, when you have that focus and, and it's almost like uh, an obsession in terms of, really just focusing very, very detailed into, you know, uh, delivering that and making sure the experience for the user is number one, the most important uh, thing that, that you do, then that is what the users will value. And that is what they will uh, almost respect you for it. Lah. So, so that's why, you know, for us, we, uh, alhamdulillah, we were able to really focus on that and use that to grow. And then only once we were comfortable and we were happy that that, uh, that service or that particular feature of our app was at the level that is, is good enough, then only we started, we started to branch out. So I think it's important to, to make that point uh, because, you know, it's very easy for us to say now that, you know, we have a lot of things in our app that make our app uh, special, uh, but just wanted to highlight that, you know, during the first version, the Muslim Pro 1, 2 and 3, 
we actually only focus on one thing and we make sure that we are the best do, the best in the world at doing it. So I think that's the lesson, you know, if, if you really want to deliver a product, uh, don't try to be the best, you know, I mean, don't only try to be the best in your city or even the best in your country, you know, make sure that whatever you're doing, you, you know, you try to be the best uh, in the world and then only you try to grow from there. So, so that's a little bit about that. But to your point about now, what, what other things can you find in the Muslim Pro app? Uh, I think uh, we have tried to, to move from just being a religious app, you know, that has the, obviously the, the uh, Waktu Solat, the Quran, and the Qiblat, more into a community app. And this actually is something that we went into, not because, you know, only because we wanted to, but because our users uh, told us. So, so the, the benefit of having millions of users all around the world is they talk to us. So they will tell us what they need and what they want. And the first thing that our users were telling us is that, you know, um, you know, we have all these communities, uh, online communities, you know, we have Facebook, we have all these social media and channels. But one of the first things they gave us to us is that none of these channels are actually uh, built for the Muslim community. You know, uh, uh, a lot of it is, is built for just the general thing. And a lot of the times they don't feel safe. They don't feel protected. They don't feel comfortable, you know, talking about uh, Islamic topics or even talking amongst the community. So that's where Muslim Pro started to branch out. In fact, one of the, you know, one of the first uh, features that was such a powerful feature was we have it, we call it the community feature in our app, where we realized that people wanted to seek um, support from the Muslim community, but they were afraid. When they wanted to post on Facebook, they were afraid that they would get backlash from non-Muslims uh, from other community. So we created this very simple yet powerful feature where people can actually post a dua on, on the app where they can request. For example, it could be anything from, you know, uh, you have a family member who is not well and you want to ask people to help pray for the family member or, you know, you're not doing well in your in your studies or your, your career and you just want to have a bit of support, um, uh, you know, and, and, and we allowed our users to post this. And, and the good thing is they could interact with our community. Our community could reply and say that, you know, not to reply, but they could show their support by saying that they had done a prayer. And this feature, uh, you know, when we launched it, we started to get, again, it's not so much about the numbers, but about the people that reached out to us and, and told the team that, you know, this really changed my life. For once, I felt that I was part of a global Muslim community. I had people, strangers all around the world, because you can see, you would have someone from, you know, uh, uh, from other places or people, you know, doing their umrah, pray for, for, for uh, say a prayer for you. This was a very powerful tool. And I think this convinced us that, Muslim Pro now having the user base, the global user base, having the platform that we do, you know, we have to do more to be able to empower uh, the community to voice itself as well as, you know, um, uh, do it in a way that is positive, uh, not so much negative, but allow uh, the community to to, uh, to rely and, and, and basically grow. Lah. Okay. And I can see that um, even uh, we can have a positive uh, quote of the day, every day. We can download it and we can post it to our uh, social media. And it is uh, a very good uh, quote available through uh, Muslim Pro. And uh, for me, myself, I think uh, I'm a, a diehard fan, uh, uh, die fan of Muslim Pro, I say, because um, uh, you know, sometimes when we, ha we feel um, tired, we try to, to look for uh, motivation and uh, we can find that through Muslim Pro. Okay, uh, there is a one question uh, from uh, Mr. Said Ismail uh, in the Facebook. Uh, so he said, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. What were your uh, thinking process before you venture into Muslim Pro? Uh, what threads do you use to create products? So it is more towards, yeah, what is uh, your uh, thinking process before you venture into Muslim Pro? And I think, um, yeah, please, uh, Naomi. Okay, uh, yeah, so I just want to, to maybe I, I just uh, highlight the point that I, I'm actually not the creator of Muslim Pro. Uh, you yeah, know, so exactly. Great product, and, and, but thank you for the question. I, I think I can share a little bit about me personally, um, and I think this might be helpful for, for people as well. You know, for, for my background, I was in uh, banking in the finance space, and, and I think um, I very much enjoyed that. Obviously, working on, on, on a lot of the, as you mentioned, m &A was very exciting. You know, we helped companies to grow. We helped companies to get uh, access to funding. 
but then this opportunity came across where uh, someone was telling me about Muslim Pro. I was actually already a user at that point, uh, but I didn't realize, you know, the, the thing is when, when you get an opportunity presented to you, uh, you, you realize that there's two parts to it. Like one is the job, uh, which I found an exciting. It was to actually, at that time, Muslim Pro did not have a Malaysia office. So my role was to set up uh, the Malaysia office and set up the team. Uh, that was an exciting opportunity. But the second part, which I think uh, would answer his question is, you know, what convinced me to join? And, and what convinced me to join was basically to see uh, the, the, the opportunity that, that, that was Muslim Pro. Lah. I think when, as I mentioned at that time, uh, you know, I was so used to using the app, but I didn't realize how many people really depended on it. You know, when, when, I, when I was looking at the company and I started to read and, and, and read about what uh, people who, who use the app, how much they rely on it, you know, going on social media, listening to what people on Twitter would say, you know, how uh, they would say, for example, in, in some parts of Europe that, you know, uh, they are far from their families. They don't have any community. They don't have any tool to help them to, uh, practice their ibadah, you know, they don't have the, the support network, you know, and basically Muslim Pro was, as you said, their support network, you know, helping them to, to, to do this. So this mission uh, and basically this, uh, uh, this opportunity really convinced me that, you know, um, not only is a great job, it's a great role, but it's also a company with a great mission. So, so I think that was something that, that, that convinced me to join and, 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 and I can only speak for me personally uh, uh, okay. that, that convinced me. To the second point, uh, I think he, he asked also about what, uh, what, what do we think about when, before we, you know, we, we launch features. And I think at the end of the day, it, it has to go to two things. Number one, we always try to, to uh, listen to our users. At the end of the day, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, uh, what do you call it? It's really amazing when you really uh, have a platform where you not only have the benefit of listening to, for example, one group, right? If you look at our users, we have young users, we have old users, we have users living in cities, we have users living in, uh, you know, rural parts, you know, all across the world. Uh, each and every single one of them with their different needs and their different challenges. So, so we realize that uh, the best way for us to develop a product uh, is actually to listen to our users and not only to, to be able to uh, create something that is beneficial for one particular user base, so maybe not only for Malaysians, but also for uh, Muslims living all around the world. So that's something that we were very focused on. And we do a lot of uh, work to make sure that when we do our testing and before we launch something, we make sure that the user uh, feedback is all part of it. The second part is, is to go back to my point is that we have to recognize what our strengths and what our weaknesses are. Uh, so, so there are a lot of things that we want to do. I think I look at the Umar Summit and I see some of the speakers, they are involved in a lot of areas, whether it's education, whether it's uh, Islamic finance, and all of those areas are very attractive. And a lot of people probably think, you know, uh, oh, it may make sense for Muslim people to go into the area. You know, you have millions of users. Why can't you, you go into Islamic finance? Why can't you go into education? Why can't you go into... So for us, uh, we recognize all these opportunities, but we must always also see what we are very good at. You know, at the end of the day, we are, uh, a very digital focused company. We are an app. Uh, we are good at creating tools that are very useful uh, for the Muslim community. And we must always make sure that whenever we launch something, whenever we go into a new space, that we try to combine those two areas between what our users want and then also with what the strengths of the company is. Now. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, Muslim Pro is coming, uh, is uh, uh, based in Malaysia or it is a Malaysian company. Or it is a, a, a what, what, where, where do you, uh, the HQ is? Yeah, so just to give a little bit of background, when Muslim Pro was started, uh, started by our funding team, uh, it was actually started in Singapore. Okay. Uh, but, uh, Alhamdulillah, for now, we've actually already established two additional offices. So uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, I helped to set up our Malaysia office, which is also a very uh, important office for us. And then we also subsequently opened another office in Jakarta. So as of now, we have uh, these three offices. Uh, and then in terms to answer your, your question, uh, actually we have uh, quite a few shareholders, uh, but one of the main shareholders which, we actually, which people don't actually realize is that actually Muslim Pro um, is now uh, to a certain extent almost a Malaysian company because uh, our major shareholder is actually uh, the, the 
uh, part of the Affin group. So so it's also good to know that uh, you know we can, and that's also been the reason why you know we've set up office in Malaysia and be able to grow our, our here because we also have uh, the good support from our Malaysian shareholder as well. Okay, I think uh, uh, maybe uh, the viewer out there would like to know more uh, about um, what is the challenges uh, for you, uh, as a, especially uh, to penetrate uh, the market? And what is the challenges uh, for Muslim Pro uh, to convey the message uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the young user? Maybe the young generation they might download uh, TikTok better uh, rather than to download uh, Muslim Pro. Uh, but those uh, uh, at the age of uh, 30 and above, maybe uh, they are the ones that uh, tra do all the traveling. They are the ones that are uh, uh, having a tight schedule. So they need things uh, to remind them for solid uh, time. But what is the challenges for, for Muslim Pro to penetrate the millennial? Yeah, that's a very good question. And, and I think the first thing is to recognize who is your real competition, right? Or not to say who's your competition, but uh, who, yeah. who do you need to uh, be aware of? So okay. a lot of people ask me, Muslim Pro, that means who are your competitors or who are the people that you uh, go against? It must be other Islamic apps. And I quickly tell them, no, that's not who my competitors. If you look at it, all apps, whether it is YouTube, whether it is Facebook, whether it is Muslim Pro, Pro, whether it is Netflix or all these apps, they are actually all after the same thing, which is to get the user's attention and the user's time, right? Any yeah. minute that a user is spending on, uh, 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 like you rightly pointed out, TikTok means that they are not spending their time on Muslim Pro. So we quickly realized that very early on. And I think that's also been one of the foundation um, for Muslim Pro is that we realized our product cannot be the best Islamic product. It has to be, we have to compete to create the best digital product full stop. So if you look at, uh, uh, you know, when, when and, and this goes back to that same question, every time we build products and we are, uh, you know, when we are, we are, we are doing our, uh, our planning and when we do our testing, we have to benchmark ourselves, not to the other Islamic apps that are out there, but basically to the world-class, the best apps out there. So basically to the Facebook, the Instagrams, because these are the platforms that people are used to. And just because you are building an Islamic product doesn't mean that the users who are willing to accept lower quality or something that is not at the same level or the same standard. So that's been one of the challenges, but it's also been uh, one of the opportunity where, you know, when we hire people, when we, when we grow our team and, and, and we go through this process, we really make sure that uh, our service, number one, the product and the, and the service level has to be at the same level of all the world-class apps. So that when people use Muslim Pro, they don't feel like, uh, they don't feel like there's any difference uh, uh, between using Muslim Pro or, you know, uh, uh, some of the other bigger apps like, you know, Instagram. So what, what are some examples of this? So for example, you look at our Quran, one of the things that was, we did very quickly when, when Apple users who, who launched the, uh, uh, when Apple launched the new uh, uh, iPhone that had dark mode for people to be able to read at night, we worked really, really hard to make sure that Muslim Pro was one of the very first few apps that made our app totally available on dark mode, meaning that you could you can read our, our Quran, you can use our app in the dark, right? So this is an example of because, you know, no other Islamic apps had it, had it at the other point, but because the biggest apps, you know, some of the most successful apps, you know, had it, non-Islamic non apps had it, we made sure that we tried to rise to that same level and do that. And then if you do that, uh, if you go to that level, if you try to not only uh, cater to, like you said, uh, your strong market, which is uh, sometimes for us, you know, the traditional market, we know that the older population, they will definitely use our app because they are more, uh, but they spend more attention on religion. We try to also cater to the younger generation that, to be fair, they have options. They have op options available. They can choose to spend their time on Muslim Pro or on Facebook or on Instagram. So the daily inspiration, uh, playing with how we deliver the content so that it is in a way that it is um, not only uh, upper, uh, uh, easy to read and, and, and usable, but also very relevant for the young community. All of this plays in a very important role in us being able to make sure that the, the youth, the younger uh, um, uh, the younger audience also feels comfortable and attracted to use the Muslim Pro app. 
So there's a lot of reasons, but it's a lot of hard work. But um, yeah, it's, it's definitely something that, you know, we still, it's still a challenge every day and, and we try our best to, to do it. Okay. Uh, in the beginning, you said that uh, currently, um, inshallah, uh, we, uh, I mean, uh, Muslim Pro will, will, will reach one, uh, 100 million uh, downloads. And uh, we can see that that is a good benchmark of uh, a success. Uh, and I believe that throughout the journey, uh, there are a lot of failures, a lot of uh, up and, and, and down. Uh, maybe you can share uh, the experience of Muslim Pro uh, from the initial journey uh, until uh, we reach uh, 10 years old. And uh, maybe it is good uh, to inspire uh, the young generation that uh, the young um, app developer that they design apps, they create apps, but then their apps does not uh, meet the market uh, uh, attention. And uh, what what is what are the what are the up and downs uh, from uh, a Muslim Pro? Uh, point of view, yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, there's, there's a few points um, that I want to touch on. I think one of the very first uh, points that, that uh, you know, I want to touch on and I think is very important, especially for the younger generation is that, you know, success doesn't happen in a straight line, you know. It's not you grow every year and you become better, you know. what? And, and if you were to look at Muslim Pro, yes, uh, if you look at our 10-year journey and, and where we started to where we are now, Obviously, uh, a lot of people can, can say, wow, it's amazing to see the journey. They're very successful. But between these 10 years, there have been a lot, as you say, a lot of up and down. And, and one of the, the, the strong uh, points that, that, that Muslim Pro has is that, you know, we recognize that in order to grow, you must be prepared to fail, right? Uh, and what we instead focus on is a culture where uh, not only amongst ourselves, but the team, where we accept that we are going to fail. We are going to make mistakes. There are going to be times where we make decisions that are wrong uh, because we know we are not, number one, we are not perfect. Uh, number two, we don't have all the answers available. But the more important thing is you must always have, go back to what your mission, have your, your goal. Uh, you know, people like to say your compass, where, you're, where is it that you want to hit? And you've got to stick to it. So, you know, uh, uh, that's the first thing, you know, to always, because... There will be times where, you know, sometimes you, you, you feel that um, it's, it's too challenging or, or the decision that you make is, is the wrong decision and you have a setback and you may want to give up. And I think that's, especially if you look at it now in, in COVID where this has been a very, very challenging year and, and a lot of people are probably in a position where they have to make some very tough decisions about what they should do and what should they continue. You know, it's, it's something that you have to recognize that, you know, there will be these moments uh, and you have to really uh, pull through. The second thing that, that we do, and, and, I, and, and I think I touched on it, is that you have to have a culture where you, yes, you allow failure, but you must fail fast and, and move on very fast. So to give you an example, you know, we, we on, a, on a monthly basis, um, we are running more than 30, 40 tests. So when I say these are tests, these are things as simple as changing uh, features in the app or how we display information or testing out uh, some new piece of content. And majority of this will fail. Majority, I'm not talking about, you know, half, I'm talking about more. 75, 80% of our ideas will fail. But wow. guess what? 20% of it may not fail. And you'll be surprised. The ones that you think are going to be very, very successful is a good idea, is a very straightforward idea, it may fail. And the ones that you just do because you give it a try and you feel like this is probably not going to do much, suddenly, uh, it, it, in fact, just to share with you, actually, one of my colleagues who came up with the idea of the daily inspiration, at that time, no one thought that, that it, it would be uh, that big. You know, people felt you are just doing a picture with a quote. What's so special about it? But yet, uh, when we launched that feature, it became the most shared feature of our app. So, so to the young people, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you can't, don't, you know, don't, don't think that you have to have everything planned out you know the it's more important as i said to to get uh, your hands dirty to get involved uh, to not be afraid of failure but then to also recognize that you know if you have to fail you must fail fast but be ready to get up even faster and, and, and try 
you know, moving on to the next thing. And I think if you can embrace that mindset, if you can embrace that culture, uh, you know, it, it will really help you. And that's been the Muslim pro journey. Uh, people think that, you know, we, we didn't get to where we are. It's just been, you know, uh, moving forward all the time. Sometimes we fall, sometimes we take two steps back, but we just make sure that we keep taking more steps forward so that by the end of the journey, we are much further than where we started. So, so I think that's a little bit, I mean, I know some of it is a little bit, uh, it may not be, you know, really into the examples, but at least uh, it, it will give an idea for the users. Lah. Yeah, and I really uh, love the, 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 the concept of uh, uh, the culture of fail fast. You fail, yes, you fail, but then you need to recover better. So it is a kind of uh, watching uh, the uh, investment uh, you need to buy during the uh, uptrend, not the, the downtrend uh, kind of thing. So you fall, yes, you fall, but then you need to go higher than before. Then uh, uh, what is, um, I mean, uh, when, when you guys are designing apps, building apps, what is the, uh, the big why of doing this? Uh, we can connect like uh, uh, I'm, I'm quite surprised where when I went to uh, Tanzania, I found that uh, uh, Musalla in Tanzania, they are using Muslim Pro. And I said that to them that you know that this uh, app uh, uh, is uh, uh, one of the, the most uh, popular apps in Malaysia. They said, yes, uh, because uh, we, uh, we use Muslim Pro because of it is from Malaysia. And they never say about uh, from Singapore, but they said it is from Malaysia. And uh, when I went to uh, Turkey also, people are using Muslim Pro. And uh, just now my, my, my mobile uh, um, uh, having notification for Asar prayer. So this is, uh, what is the, the, the big why of you designing, uh, your guys uh, design this kind of application? To connect people or to connect uh, Muslims throughout the world? What is the big why for Muslim Pro to design this kind of uh, application? Yeah, I think that's, that's, I think that's very important and, and the why has to be there, right? Uh, for us, there's probably two, two whys. You know, number one, uh, you know, we recognize the personal struggle of a Muslim. And, and, and one thing, to, and, and you touch on it, is actually the personal struggle of a Muslim in Malaysia is very different than the personal struggle of a Muslim living in US or living in Europe. So that was where one of the very first few lessons we had to learn, right? Uh, most people like to say, oh, there are 1.8 billion, more than 1.8 billion Muslims around the world. But what they don't realize is those Muslims are very, very different from each other. You know, We are not one homogenous group. We are actually very different. So what we have tried to do is First of all, understanding the why, but not understanding the why of my why as a user, right? Because my, my experience as a Muslim or a user in Malaysia is very different than a user in Tanzania or even a user in Europe. So the first thing we have to do, we like to say we're a global app, but we have, we're an app built to also try to reach out to the local community. So one of the very first few things is we learn about the challenges of all the, the whys of all the Muslims living around the world, which are very different. Uh, the second thing is once we are able to solve that particular problem, uh, we then move to the second bigger why, which is that uh, uh, helping the Muslim communities uh, connect with each other. And, and I think just to share with you something that, you know, uh, is, is something that has been amazing that, you know, for the longest time, for example, when we were growing, a lot of people said, uh, you know, they told me, Nick, why are you looking, why are you guys making an effort to translate the app in Spain, in Italian? Uh, why don't you focus on, you know, Muslim countries, you know, do more in Indonesia, do more in Malaysia, you know, uh, but we recognize that uh, these users were very isolated, you know, especially our users in France and, and, and Italy and, 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 and Spain, you know, they really needed a product, they really needed, needed the support. And then you can imagine that uh, during uh, when, when COVID uh, started to get really bad at the start of the year in March and, and April, um, the communities that were hit the hardest were these communities in Europe. You know, you probably read the news about Italy, Spain having such. And we started to see our user base uh, uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this space um, 
really double, triples, people from, you know, our downloads in Italy and Spain, you know, really uh, went through the roof. And we were only able to do that because we had catered the product. We had made the effort to make sure that the translation of the one, you know, the prayer times are also accurate in Italy and Spain. And if we were to not have done that, if we were not to ask our question why we were doing that, which is to make sure that we cater to the Muslim community, we would, we would not have been able to deliver this year. So it's very important to have that why. So, so going back to that why, for us now is to make sure that our product, um, uh, our service or whatever we do is for the Muslim community, but not only the Muslim community in Malaysia and Indonesia, even though those are our important, but to make sure that we don't forget about the Muslims living you know, in, 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 in the world and all of these other places that also need our support. Yeah. So that's a very big part of our why. Yeah. And I can see that um, while uh, the mosque is uh, closed uh, during the last uh, lockdown, when uh, we are not allowed uh, to, uh, to gather among Muslims uh, for Traweh, but uh, we feel close uh, to uh, Muslim Pro because uh, we are, uh, there are a lot of features, like for example, like uh, uh, the uh, uh, while we are traveling, for example, uh, we still uh, we still can listen to azan, we still uh, can read Quran, and we uh, there are a lot of notification, a lot of information in uh, the application, and uh, I believe that uh, by having uh, the features. It's more to uh, to connect the Muslim community, and yes, it is not like a social media where people are posting uh, their uh, dinner. Uh, and uh, normally, when we before we eat, we need to say our dua. But before the dua is the photo. That is the the, the, the new trend. So even uh, we post in the Facebook, we take the photo and we. We, we, we write there, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, in the bracket, read it. Not only write it, write it out. So, uh, do you see that in the future, Muslim Pro will be a, a kind of a social media for, uh, for Muslim community? Yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, I think that's definitely uh, an area that we are looking into. Uh, I think we want to do it in the way that is right and and it's something that we have to think very carefully about how we do it so i think you're aware at the end of the day whatever you create these are just tools right social media is a tool and and when people see um, you know they, they see they can they can use the tool for good or they can use the tool for bad right we see so many things on on social media a lot of them are good but on the other side there's a lot of bad things right when you have that, that platform, uh, uh, there is always the potential for people to misuse it. So one of the things that we are very uh, careful about is we want to make sure that Muslim Pro app, you know, we can't, obviously we can't protect the whole world. We can't make sure that you know, the whole world is, is, uh, is, is safe, but we want to try to make sure that the app is protected in a way that the users, number one, feel safe, they feel comfortable, and they also, uh, engage in a way that's positive. So, so that's why, you know, it's, there's no right answer if you ask about social media. One of the biggest challenges of social media is that it, it allows people to, 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 you know, to take advantage of it. And not everyone will be using it for the good reasons. Some people will try to use it for the bad reasons. So we've always tried to keep Muslim Pro as a place or an application where it's only, you know, uh, focusing on the positive side. So even if you see the daily inspiration, you see the feature where it's community, a lot of it, uh, yes, some people say, why do you restrict? Why can't, you know, why can't I upload my own photo? Why can't I do a lot of things? We will slowly get that. We will definitely see what we can do. But first and foremost, we always stick with our mission is it has to be a safe platform. It has to be a platform that people are comfortable and has to be positive. You know, we really feel that one of the things that the world needs more of is more about the you know, the Muslim community needs to feel empowered, needs to feel good about itself. And, and they already face a lot of challenges out in the rest of the world, you know, whether it's people attacking them, uh, you know, on social media or different challenges. They don't also need to have Muslim Pro being a place where they also, you know, face this negative thing. So that's something that we okay. 
there's no right answer if you ask me um, um, you know, I don't have the, the right answer yet, but it's something that we do study, but we want to do it in the right way and be very careful about it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, is there any possibility that uh, people can, uh, can start to pay uh, zakah or to send a uh, donation uh, through the apps? Because sometimes when I, when I use uh, the apps, uh, the first thing that I really imagine is that what if uh, there are um, uh, features where we can pay our zakah or we can send any donation to any initiative? Is that, uh, or maybe, yeah, kind of that. What is uh, your take for that? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's definitely, look, it's, it's, it's something that, that is also in itself one of the big challenges. I think, again, if I were to draw the example of, uh, you know, Malaysia, we are very fortunate. You know, we can, there's so many ways that we can pay our own zakat. I think most of us even have our online uh, our payment, you know, banking, we can, we can make the payment, we can go to, some of the uh, the state punya zakat agency to make, or we can go to uh, our masjid. There's, there's so many ways. Um, so one of the things that, the reason why we haven't really gone into that is we wanted, again, you can say that maybe it's also our fault. Uh, we wanted to make sure that if we develop a product, whether it is zakat for people to do donations, whether they can, you know, for them to do the zakat, could we do something that, uh, not only you know something that we can do in Malaysia, but something that is global, right? So that is in itself a very big challenge because when it comes down to anything that is transaction related, and I'm sure all of our you know, the other panels, all of the experts on Islamic finance will tell you, is that there is no global uh, uh, system that is that can work in every single country. You look at the biggest guys, whether it is Facebook or the credit card or whatever, all of them have had to adapt on a country by country basis. So for Muslim Pro, we are still not there yet that, you know, we have been able to launch uh, a, a product or a service that is, um, you know, that works for the whole world. Um, you know, the question is, can we do it or should we uh, try to do it for certain markets? That's something that we definitely do. Uh, and, and we also recognize at the end of the day, like I said earlier, that we do not have all the expertise, you know, when it comes down to payments and everything. Uh, obviously, it will require more expertise. So this is something that we may potentially not only do um, ourselves, but we may partner with somebody, you know, uh, to, to allow us to do that. So, so yes, uh, that's something that, uh, inshallah, uh, I think we're, we're definitely looking into and, and hopefully uh, in, in the near future, we will have something uh, ready for, for you so that you, you can one day yeah. use Muslim food. <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, when, uh, when I do, uh, when uh, during my travel, I, I met a few uh, Chinese uh, Muslim brothers. And they said uh, it is very hard for them to, to donate uh, or to send uh, their zakat and sedekah. And they, they ask whether is there any global uh, application that we can send the money. I said, oh, we have uh, Pusat Zakat uh, Malaysia. Uh, but then, oh, that one is uh, uh, we don't we need to use uh, the international uh, uh, remittance things like that. So yeah, I think uh, that will solve some other problem uh, in those countries. Yeah, just to, to, to touch on that, we actually did a test. We did a very simple test with one of the Zakat, uh, not to say Zakat, lah, one of the non-profit uh, organizations in Indonesia. So just to give you an idea of how challenging it is, right? Uh, so when we did this small test during, uh, actually it was during uh, uh, the, the Hari Raya Haji where we were trying to help this organization to collect korban, uh -huh. uh, allow people to do their, their korban, right? We recognized, you know, uh, the different... Not only you have to recognize, again, you have to make sure that you address the, the, the users in that country. So for Indonesia, even though you have, uh, you know, uh, um, you have a lot of users, we recognize that the users are just not comfortable. You know, if you have an international payment uh, way, you can do your zakat, but you put credit card there, no one is going to donate because most Indonesians don't have a credit card. You know, Some of them even have online banking, but they're not used to online banking. Okay. They only know e-wallet, you know, they only know how to transfer or they're used to transferring, you know, uh, whether it is their, their currency, they have Pulsar, they have um, the, the credits, you know, um, in some of these wallets. So if you have to do something, you must be prepared to go the whole way and make sure that uh, uh, it is up to them. As, as I said, back to that same question, the experience has to be the best. Lah. So if we do a tool, it has to not be, you know, the best Islamic zakat tool. It has yeah. to be the best 
payment experience, you know, full stop. The same experience that people use when they are going to the uh, to the cinema, they whatever when they're doing their normal day buying groceries, it has to be at that same level so that um, you know the experience is is really at that level. So that's always been the the challenge. Uh, it's something that uh, you know I understand a lot of users have definitely been request requesting for it. So uh, hopefully we will be able to to deliver something uh, soon. Yeah. Okay, uh, Niamh. I think uh, we are out of time. Uh, we have left another four minutes uh, before we end. Uh, can you share with us your final uh, advice to the young generation? Uh, most of most of our um, uh, viewer are at the age of eighteen until uh, thirty. And maximum would be uh, 40 or 40, uh, 45. So what is uh, your final advice to young generation? Uh, how to, uh, to, to go through this uh, challenging time, especially uh, during the pandemic? So what is your advice uh, to young generation? Yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's a very tough, uh, tough point, especially now with the pandemic. I think there's, there's probably three things that I would say. The first thing is, number one, is don't be too hard on yourself. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, most people uh, don't realize is that, you know, this, this, this time that we're going through now is, is very, very challenging, you know. And, and the first thing is, you know, realize that, you know, be, number one, focus on your blessings, focus on what, I understand that for some people, you know, they may not have a job, you know, they, they may have a lot of challenges. But, but you must still focus on what you have. So if you're healthy, be, you know, uh, be thankful, uh, you know, appreciate that you're healthy. That's the first thing, because if you don't have that mindset, if you don't put yourself in a place where you're positive, it's very easy to, to get caught up. You know? uh, it's, it's very easy to, uh, uh, to get lost. And, 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 and I think that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing is to realize that uh, in every, every big challenge, there is always equally a very big opportunity. So again, I go back to that same lesson, you know, for, for Muslim Pro, this year has been one of the most challenging years. You know, we, we've had to really try to, to change the, you know, our service. We had so many issues when a lot, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, um, for example, trying to deliver our service to Europe, when all these people started relying on our product, who never relied on our product before, you know, who, who needed our support. Um, but then it creates that opportunity, right? Um, so we were prepared to do it only because, you know, we, 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 uh, you know, we were willing, we were ready. So to always have that mindset to, to be prepared to face the challenges. The third thing is probably more, those two are a little bit more soft. People are probably wondering, yes, that's basic advice. Everyone is giving the same. Uh, the third thing is something that really I, I have to highlight is for the younger uh, generation. There is so much tools available, and, and I'll just give you an example myself. You know, every every week I'm I'm coming across two new tools that help me with my job, and most of these tools are free. You know, whether if, if you start a business and, and you need to learn how to grow, you know, you want to. And I'm not talking about Muslim Pro; it can be anything. You know, you want to uh, draw baju or you want to sell food. You want to learn how to market. You want to learn how to improve. Uh, your, your, your product, you want to learn how to survey your users. There's so many online tools available. And now that people are more online, you know, in the past, you had to go and meet the people face to face. You had to go and sell to them face to face. You have to get their feedback face to face. Now that the world has moved online, you make use of the opportunity. If you are, you know, a, a student who just graduated, don't just think that my only option is to find a job. You know, you, you have so much more opportunity. Uh, you can be a freelancer can start your own course you can you know even if you don't have anything you can uh, uh, within one month you can do five six courses on anything from marketing to finance to uh, you can teach yourself how to start a business this this is, is a very tough time but it's also a time of, of very tremendous opportunity so don't be afraid to give it a try and I think as you rightly said and, and I said you know it's okay to fail but fail fast and, and keep moving forward so that's probably my last my last words Thank you very much, uh, Amir. Uh, thank you for your words. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your time. Uh, we hope that uh, all the viewers uh, will uh, will uh, take uh, the pearl that you share you share with us. And uh, inshallah, 
uh, in the long term run, in, in, in the future, we can see more young people uh, developing things for the betterment of the ummah uh, to connect uh, from, from uh, one Muslim community to another Muslim community and for our uh, betterment of the whole, uh, you know, uh, the whole uh, globe and also for the ummah. Thank you very much, Ali Amir, uh, for uh, joining us uh, today. And may Allah uh, bless all of you. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Uh, to those uh, who are still uh, online, inshallah, uh, we will come back uh, shortly. Uh, we will have a short break and we will meet me together uh, again after this with our next uh, panel. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and see you after this.